Blue and yellow. You have probably seen this color combo a lot during the last year and a half of Russia's war against Ukraine, at rallies and protests, on balconies and murals. Sometimes you see it together with the coats of arms of Ukraine, a trident or trizubin Ukrainian. What do these symbols and colors mean to Ukraine? And how did they originate? My name is Natalia Chakotun, I'm a reporter at the Kiev Independent, and I'm here to tell you more about the history of the Ukrainian emblem and flag. A combination of blue and yellow color was used as the emblem and flag of the Kingdom of Galicia Volhynia, a medieval state that existed on the territory of modern-day Western Ukraine between the 12th and 14th centuries. Introduced by Prince Danilo of Galicia, they both featured a golden line on a blue background. A very similar symbol remains on the flag of Ukraine's Western Lviv Oblast today. The combination of blue and yellow colors could also be seen on some flags of Ukrainian Cossacks, especially often after the 18th century. Among other things, they featured yellow stars, crosses, or weapons on a blue background. But what about the blue and yellow bands, which today make up the flag of Ukraine? And what do these colors actually symbolize? According to the most popular interpretation, the blue represents the sky and the yellow a field of wheat, which is ubiquitous in Ukraine. A flag with blue and yellow bands was raised at the Lviv City Hall for the first time in June 1848, during a wave of revolutions across Europe, which later became known as the Springtime of Nations. Following the collapse of the Russian Empire in 1917, the Ukrainian People's Republic, a short-lived independent Ukrainian state, adopted the blue and yellow bands as its official flag. In 1918, it also became the flag of the Western Ukrainian People's Republic, a state that existed between 1918 and 1919 before uniting with the Ukrainian People's Republic. Pictures of the flag from the time have sparked a heated debate in today's Ukraine. Does the blue go on top and yellow on the bottom? or vice versa. Historian Andrei Hrychilo says that blue and yellow colors were distorted in black and white pictures at the time due to the use of silver bromide in photography, making it hard to tell which color was on top. But if you compare Ukrainian flags in black and white pictures of the time with flags kept in museums, you'll actually see that blue is on top. Though before 1918, both versions of the flag, one with yellow on top and the other with the blue on top, existed in Ukraine. During Soviet times, the Ukrainian flag was banned and displaying it was even a crime punishable by imprisonment. In 1966, two workers, Viktor Kuksa and Georgi Muskalenko, who dreamed of seeing Ukraine as an independent country, raised the Ukrainian flag over the building of Kyiv Institute of National Economy. They raised the flag on the eve of International Workers' Day on the 1st of May, when communist demonstrations were expected in downtown Kyiv. They made the flag themselves by sewing two scarves together and wrote an inscription on it, saying Ukraine hasn't died yet, it hasn't been killed yet. Viktor was sentenced to two years of imprisonment and he or he to three. The first city to raise the Ukrainian flag over the building of the city hall was Stry in Lviv Oblast in March 1990 when Ukraine was still part of the Soviet Union. It was raised in Kyiv in July 1990, shortly after the parliament of the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic adopted the declaration on the state sovereignty of Ukraine on the 16th of July 1990, a precursor of Ukraine's declaration of independence in 1991. But one of the most iconic moments in Ukraine's history occurred when a group of lawmakers brought a large blue and yellow flag to the Ukrainian parliament on the 24th of August 1991, the day when Ukraine declared its independence from the USSR. On the 28th of January 1992, it was adopted as the official flag of Ukraine. During turbulent times in Ukraine's modern history, the blue and yellow flag has always been present. People carried it during the Revolution on Granite in 1990, the Orange Revolution in 2004, in the Euromaidan Revolution between 2016 and 2014. And over the course of Russia's war against Ukraine since 2014, it has become an important symbol of resistance, especially in Russian-occupied territories. In 2016, Ukrainian farmer and activist Vladimir Baluk raised the Ukrainian flag over his courtyard in Crimea. 
Following Russia's annexation of Crimea in 2014, Russian Federal Security Service officers took down the flag twice. Eventually, Balov was falsely convicted of weapons possession and disobeying the police and sentenced to five years in prison. In 2019, he was released as part of prisoner exchange between Ukraine and Russia. In 2022, Bogdan Ziza, another activist from Crimea, poured blue and yellow paint over the entrance to the Russian Occupational Administration in the city of Yevpatorium. A court in Russia sentenced him to 15 years in custody for terrorism. Other people have even been killed over the Ukrainian flag, including Volodymyr Rybak, a deputy of the Horlivka City Council in Donetsk Oblast. In 2014, when Horlivka was already occupied by Russian forces, Rybak tried to remove the Russian flag from the city council and replace it with the Ukrainian flag. He was later kidnapped and tortured to death. To avoid persecution, people in Russian-occupied areas often had to hide the Ukrainian flags. Some even buried them under paving slabs, like this woman from Kherson. She dug up the flag only after the Ukrainian forces had liberated the city. When celebrating the liberation of Kherson in November, some people carried the Ukrainian flags they had hid during the occupation. And this is the Ukrainian trident or trizub, the country's coat of arms. You might have seen it on President Volodymyr Zelensky's t-shirts. How old is this symbol and what does it actually mean? There are more than 40 theories about the meaning of the trident, including that it refers to the Holy Trinity, a triple candlestick, a falcon, an ear of rye, and a bow with an arrow. Another popular interpretation says that the word freedom or voila in Ukrainian is encrypted in trizub. None of the theories are widely accepted. The three prone spear dates back to the times of Kiev and Rus, a medieval power that existed within the territories of modern day Ukraine, Belarus, and western parts of Russia from around the 9th to 13th century. Prince Vitoslav the Grey from the Rurik dynasty, who ruled Kiev and Rus in the 10th century, used a bident as an emblem. His son, Prince Vladimir the Great, who baptized Truth, added one more prone to the trident to make it look different from the emblem of Svetoslav and other members of the princely family, says historian Alexander Alfyorov. The trident was stamped on gold and silver coins issued by Prince Vladimir the Great, as well as on weapons and bricks. After the rule of the Rurik dynasty, the trident was no longer used as a coat of arms. The emblem got a new life in the 20th century when the Ukrainian People's Republic proclaimed independence in 1917, and a special commission was created to work on the country's coat of arms. Mihailo Grushevsky, the head of the parliament of the Ukrainian People's Republic, thought a golden plow on a blue background should have been used as the coat of arms of the republic. It was meant to symbolize creative peaceful labor, writes the Ukrainian Institute for National Remembrance. Yet, the commission chose the trident as the country's emblem. In 1918, the trident was printed on banknotes, and during Soviet times, it was banned just like the Ukrainian flag. After Ukraine restored its independence in 1991, the Verkhovna Rada, Ukraine's parliament, approved the trident as the Ukrainian coat of arms. This symbol can now be seen everywhere, from rings and t-shirts to pins and tattoos. And just like the Ukrainian flag, the trident has been the target of Russian occupation authorities. So as you can see, the Ukrainian flag and the trident are not just national symbols, but important markers of resistance that Ukrainians turn to in the face of oppression.